Hello and welcome everyone to another play-by-email series of War in the Pacific Admirals Edition. We're using the Focus Pacific mod here, and this game is a little bit different. Uh, it's a co-op game, so I will be sharing the Allied Command with... Sorry, a little action here in, in the uh, uh, Gulf of Siam. But uh, essentially, I'll be sharing command with uh, another player whose name is Evoken. And Evoken will be commanding the Chinese and the United States and the Philippines, while I'll have the uh, British, the French, Commonwealth, Australia, New Zealand, and Dutch. So. Uh, I'm calling my command Alphabet Command, and the name of the series Alphabet Command, because of the disparate uh, forces that I'll be uh, commanding. Australia, Britain, uh, Commonwealth, Dutch, and France, and New Zealand. So, lots of different things. Oh, Canada, I should say. <laughs> um, so, lots of different forces I'll be commanding. If we were playing a normal game of War in the Pacific, that may not be too much. You may think, oh, well, you know, that the United States player really has most of the responsibility. And that's still true. Evoken, uh, by the end of the game, is going to have by far more forces than I will to command. However, in Focus Pacific, I do have some additional units. I have more Dutch forces, and most significantly, I have a lot of French forces under my command. So um, I'll have a little bit more to do than if we were playing a co-op game uh, of stock. In any case, we're playing a very, very experienced Japanese player by the name of Gukutani, Um and I'm expecting a very painful uh, first turn here. I was dreading it a little bit as I was starting it off. Um, but let's watch it. Let's see what happens. We're starting off with some uh, sub-combat and uh, K-17 places or torpedo in an AK. So that's a good start. Let's see what else happens here. Looks like some Japanese destroyers run into some, maybe some allied DMS. Yep. Probably not going to go well for the DMS. that he gets uh, on uh, December 6th that can move further than normal uh, to prosecute some uh, unorthodox uh, attacks, including this one at Johnston Island. Luckily, the DMSs don't go down, but with heavy fires and heavy damage, DMS Elliot is in a lot of trouble, and they don't hit land any hits on these Japanese ships. Looks like another DMS crew runs into these same destroyers and probably in with a similar fate. Yeah, severe damage on the South Bar. These DMS support. Heavy fires on the Southland and the Hopkins on fire as well. Again, they do not land any hits on the Japanese destroyers. <laughs> okay, so a bombardment of uh, Pearl Harbor to start off with. This is another unorthodox tactic but one I've seen before using these uh, battleship groups to do a bombardment of Pearl on the same day that you're doing a uh, port strike. It can be pretty devastating. A little uh, destroyer port here. Enemy Orphan Anne at Radio Tokyo with music to lift your spirits and words to depress your morale. 
Here we have Orphan But Anne. first, Imperial General Headquarters announced today that the Imperial Navy has achieved another great victory near Hawaii with the sinking of two carriers, a battleship, and numerous cruisers and destroyers. Thanks, Orphan Anne. Easily the <laughs> most annoying part about uh, uh, War in the Pacific Admiral's Edition. In any case, they don't manage to sink the ward, which is kind of amazing, though it does have heavy fires and heavy damage. Uh, I don't know if it'll survive the day. HE Antares is going to bite the dust here for sure. The good news is that these ships are using some ammo and uh, these combats, and hopefully the bombardment won't be as terrible, but there's enough of these big ships that it'll probably be very painful. So we saw some dive bombers, it looked like, near um, Pearl. And so we can be pretty sure that they, uh, uh, they're doing a port strike there. Yeah, there's the, uh, the strike. A decent cap coming up from the uh, harbor, but uh, it's going to get ripped apart by the zeros, though. many destroyed by flak though he doesn't lose a lot of aircraft in the sky which is good or on the ground it look doesn't look like he went after the airfields at all there all the battleships take numerous torpedoes pretty much all of battleship row is uh gonna be out of commission for over a year look at these torpedo hits this is some of the largest amount of torpedo hits i have ever seen on pearl harbor just just crazy just crazy. Luckily, it looks like most of the cruisers, Detroit and Anchorage and New Orleans, got some bomb hits, but they escaped the torpedoes, which is good. No uh, airfield hits, so that's probably a good sign that he's not going to go after Pearl a second turn, though the bombardment is going to mess up the airfield quite a bit, so it's possible that he sticks around for a second turn strike. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. So that's the first, first painful thing to happen today. Zeroes uh, sweep over Clark Field here. Uh, 41 Warhawks rise to meet them, which is a surprising amount of less than a few P-35As. My opponent, this is when my partner, of course, is controlling the uh, uh, American Union forces here. And 10 uh, planes destroyed. Likely 7 of them are the P-35As, only three of the better P-40B Warhawks, and three Zeros go down. Now, every Zero that we destroy 
in this game is going to be incredibly important because it is one um, of really, it's really the only Navy model of fighter that uh, Guctany has, that her opponent has. Um, and so he's very reliant on this one particular airframe. And if we can deplete his zero pools, it'll really put a crimp on both his carrier operations and his land operations. Um, however, he does have very large pools. He does have very large production in Focus Pacific. So it's gonna be very difficult for us to get to that point. However, uh, again, every zero we take out is important. Uh, sweeps Quake Chowan as well, where I have the French Mirror 697s and Brain MS 410s. And they're going to suffer uh, from these uh, zeros. Which doesn't seem to do okay. So we only lose two PR 697s and he loses four zeros. That's a great result over Quake Chowan. Second strike, second sweep. This time, it looks like it's going uh, not as well for us. Our fighters. And yet again, this time Oscars. And we don't have as many planes in the air this time. Our cap has been uh, depleted quite a bit. And the Oscars pretty much clean up and take out our MS-410 and with no uh, no losses on their side. Nels go after the runway and wing island. Flying probably from uh, Roy the Bird or Roy Bellin Island. Doing good runway hits, um, but one of them is lost to flak and 12 damage. That's not a bad result. Looks like a large raid here on the Glentan uh, airfield, which will shut it down no problem. Um, my hurricanes that I have here don't even fly. You can see these hurricane trot bees damage and stored on the ground. I lose quite a few planes there, and he does good runway damage there to Kuantan. So here comes Clark Field Strike. Interesting that he didn't go for a Manila Strike with all these fighters, simply all these planes. But we'll see if uh, the Evoken uh, fighters can fight their way through the bombers. Fighters there are and how many zeros there are. That's going to be a tough proposition for this watch. So here it's going down, which is nice. And he does get through to the bombers. Only a handful, however, are shot down. And it looks like the Clark Field Airfield is going to be absolutely wasted. One thing that you may not be familiar with. for him to try to take out uh, on the first day. You know, not as many aircraft losses as I expected. Really not as many aircraft losses I, as I expected. Um, six zeros and three bombers destroyed. And the runway is still open. Um, it's barely open, 
only uh, 12 uh, more hits, and it would have been shuddered all the way. Uh, some caps still rises to meet the us with the bellies. lose a heavy bummer on the ground, but uh, Evoken does take out 14 of uh, Guttany's Betty's. It's a great result. So, no cap rises to meet them here. I this is Eva. Yeah, it's Eva. And because of that, lots of planes damaged and destroyed on the ground, sadly. Um, because we have December 7th Surprise turned on, it's a game setting, um, there's a good chance uh, that Cap doesn't fly for the uh, Allies in the morning of December 7th to kind of replicate the Surprise um, attack in Pearl Harbor and other places where uh, it came kind of out of nowhere, the attack. It didn't come out of nowhere historically, but you know what I mean. Uh, it was a surprise attack. So uh, because of that, uh, a lot of times you'll have squadrons set to fly cap on December 7th in the morning, and they just won't. And I imagine this is probably what happened here. So Sally's go after my airfield north of Georgetown. I do the Buffaloes and Flint Mines on cap here. But the Sally's still get through. Looks like they're destroying a lot of things on the ground. We take out Sally, but they take out a Blenheim on the ground. And they do moderate uh, runway damage. Again, they come in unescorted, but we're not going to be able to do a lot of damage here or anything. That's a large, large strike on the Alor Star. Alor Star here. Hits, but we do take out six of their uh, bombers while we lose one on the ground. His ands uh, go after Chin, Chin Chow, but don't make contact or Chin Chow. No scoring hits. Again, it's still going after the uh, airfields around here. This time, Georgetown instead of Alor Star. And our fighters. Only really make a good intercept after the bombing. We take out four of those sallies. Um, really, only minor damage to our airfield there. He is losing a lot of bombers in the air here. We hear a coach of Peru. It's one buffalo. It's not going to be able to do anything. And then we'll lose. Um, actually, don't lose any planes on the ground, which is surprising. We do lose that buffalo in the air and take some moderate runway damage. Betty's go after my destroyers, but I'm trying to sneak away from Hong Kong. British destroyers would start at Hong Kong, um, manage to get away for now. I also have some uh, motor torpedo boats following them. So here comes a naval strike from what looks to be the KB going after the Ward, which I believe is the one that engaged the battleships earlier, so it's kind of uh, fled Pearl Harbor only to get destroyed um, by these vowels here. And Kate's also going after ships in the harbor, and AMC, uh, Condor, and Cross Hill are both sunk. Oh, the boys in is in trouble. So Evo can send the boys down, hopefully to raid uh, 
Babbled out, but uh, unfortunately intercepted by this carrier task force off the coast of Mundano, and she takes a torpedo. She's probably not long for this world. Absolutely devastating. Oscars are sweeping Hong Kong. Uh, Buffalo's rise to meet them. Yeah, Alright. Yeah, two Oscars lost, no Buffalo, so that's great news. He only came in at 10,000 feet, so I believe that. Uh, I was at 10,000 as well, so. Um, but yeah, managed to uh, outfight those Oscars, which is great. Uh, they probably will not outfight these Tojos, however. Yeah, the Pueblo's destroyed those Tojos from the side, no problem. Okay, so that was the morning air phase. We're on to the PM air phase. The PM air phase, allied planes have a better chance of sorting, a better chance of running cap. Is he landing at Kona? Look at those ships there. He might be landing at Kona. That would be interesting. That would be interesting. We'll see. Looks like he's landing at San Fernando, kind of bypassing the normal invasion targets at the same time in the Philippines. Also looks like he may be landing at uh, Kuantan, again, to save us a little time here. Um, is there ships down here? No, that's a submarine. But yeah, there's a good chance he could be uh, landing there. Wow, a second port strike. Second port strike on Pearl uh, Harbor. This time, still not a lot of uh, cap in the air when it comes. Vulcan's fighters go down. They take out a decent amount of his planes. 5, 9, 10, 13, 14, 16. Man, this is just, just absolutely uh, devastating. It's one of the worst port strikes, first turn pearl strikes I've seen because of the two uh, strikes that went in. Kate's go after the Boise. Oh yeah, the Boise is in trouble. Boise is sunk. 
Farewell, Boise. Barely knew me. Oh! Striking with torpedo bombers on Soriyaba. These are flying from uh, Japanese uh, I boats. We don't take it any out with fighters, but two are destroyed by Flak, and he doesn't do any damage there, which is good. Which is good. That could have been could have been nasty for me. So probably flying from here or here. Definitely some nasty uh, first strikes from uh, from our, our opponent here. K-17, two torpedoes in this XIK. I'm pretty sure that's going to go down. Yeah, we hear the uh, sinking sound effect. A barman at Cebu. We'll see if this is just a barman or part of an invasion action as well. Naval guns not really replying. Look at those losses on the ground. Oh my goodness, look at all those damaged and destroyed planes. That is devastating. That is devastating. Wow, what a bombardment. What a bombardment. Yeah, completely shuts Cebu down uh, on the first day. Wow. And here comes that bombardment I talked about at Pearl. this done before. Yeah, just what a mess. What a mess. So he didn't need to go after the airfield at Pearl because his uh, Bob Armand Force did it for him. Look at all those damaged and destroyed planes. Disastrous. Disastrous. Huge losses on the ground. Yeah, and that runway is going to be out of commission. Lands at Eba, so that's going to allow him to bypass all this uh, stuff north of uh, Eba and get to uh, Clark and Manila before there's a chance to build up defenses. And he does land at Kona. So he's landing in the Hawaiian Islands on the first day. Wow. Wow, 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 guys. This is something we haven't seen before. Not a first day. Not a first day Hawaiian Islands invasion. Also landing at uh, Kuantan. Takes 100 casualties landing. Um, I really don't have much here to uh, oppose him, so he'll be able to cut off my rail lines and uh, make it to uh, make it down to Singapore a lot faster than normal. Lots of losses, though, unloading there at uh, Kuantan. That's nice to see. Also lands at Bigan. Uh, he completely bypasses Batan Island and I believe Legaspi, which are the, usually the two first landing sites. Looks like he might be bypassing Apari as well. He's landing at Gruch uh, Neituna, probably to build a airbase there to start controlling all this uh, area right in here. More landing here at Iba. This is a decent amount. Offloading at Iba. And that's it for the turn, guys. Wow. So. It takes begun.
Yeah, so he flew in a uh, SNLF and para dropped it to take Vega on the first turn. Oh, no! Same thing at uh, Leo as well. And that's it for the turn. So, wow, what a, uh, what a turn that was. Uh, Hawaiian Islands are in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. He has um, effectively um, completely shut down Pearl Harbor. I doubt that Evoken has many combat ships there as well, at all. Um, Airfield's toast. And he's going to be able to continue to pound that with the, uh, the KB that's right there. And I don't know if there's anything that uh, Evoken can do. I really don't. Um, it's going to be interesting. It is going to be interesting, that's for sure. Yeah, it should be a fun, interesting game where we deal with some challenges that you may not be used to seeing in a normal War in the Pacific game. Certainly, like I said, not a first turn invasion of uh, at Pearl Harbor. Well, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, I hope you follow this series. Uh, make sure to su subscribe. I feel dirty saying that, but so you can follow along with the action uh, as we fight back against Japan. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the Discord, everyone. Take care.